Tandem Nomads, episode 293. There are so many topics that we could discuss and unfold when it's about women empowerment. What do women need today in order to live up to their full potential? I want to reflect on this topic with you, but I also invited some of the great peers and members of the Tandem Nomads community who will share with you their insights on what women need today to be able to feel more empowered and live up to their full potential. Welcome to Tandem Nomads, the podcast show and entrepreneurship platform where you can find great inspiration and resources to grow a successful portable business that is aligned with your lifestyle and your priorities. This is your host, Emel Teregi. I'm a business and marketing coach and the founder of Tandem Nomads. At the time where this episode is aired, we will be celebrating Women's Day, Women's Month, and also many other important things such as the historic women around the world, and also the Equal Care Day, which is a little bit different than the Equal Pay Day, which I will talk about it briefly in a bit. But no matter when you are listening to this episode... If you are familiar with Tandem Nomads topics and history, you know that women empowerment is at the core that led me to start this podcast show and then grow a business around supporting women to feel empowered and build their own financial independence and source of fulfillment through entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship has been since a very long time a way for me to be able to enable people to actually live up to their full potential, but especially women. And this is why I'm really passionate about this topic and wanted to celebrate this important moment of the year where we put the spotlight on a lot of women and the topics related to all the things we still need to work on to be able to live in a society that allows women to live up to their full potential. However, I think you're all very well aware about all the things that our society needs still to work on. First of all, equal opportunities at work, equal pay, also equal access to funding for the founders and startups. But on top of it, I also want to highlight something that sometimes I feel like we don't focus a lot on, which is equal access to education and even healthcare. When we live in the western world we tend to forget as well that there is so many women around the world that don't even have access to the basics let alone the opportunity to grow a successful portable business or to have a successful career and create their own revenue and be able to have the same equal opportunities as their counterparts to be able to grow their source of revenue but also to be recognized for the amazing work they do and there's another thing that for me is really near to my heart and I've made a whole episode about this which is the invisible workload so the thing is that I believe that despite the fact that like I said I still think that there's so much more work to do to be able to give to women more chances and equal chances and beyond just the financial independence to have equal access to all the aspects of life that are important to be fulfilled I do think that we live more and more in a society that has given more and more equal opportunities to women. We are fortunately seeing a great progress in the fact that companies are indeed being more aware about this and also entrepreneurship is has been an amazing way to allow women to grow their businesses. Actually, for a fact, I just want to share with you a quick statistics that I found through a platform called Boss Babes, where they share the statistics that before the corona um, lockdown started, 28% of businesses in the United States were led by women. After the corona, it has been 48%. So for me, this is already an amazing figure that shows how entrepreneurship, (laughs) again, something that I've been saying for the past seven years, And having a portable business, such an amazing way to have a business and a source of revenue that allows us to live our life the way we want it. And I'm specifically specifically thinking of women who have kids. When we have children to take care of, it is so hard to be able to give our full, full, full self to our careers. And why should we when 
it's okay to have other priorities in life too, right? But I'm so pleased to see that entrepreneurship now is something that's very democratized and more and more women are realizing the amazing opportunities to having their own businesses provide them, especially in order to align their lifestyle and their priorities with their need to have something fulfilling to do and to create their own revenue. So this is something that I want to celebrate and pause here and say, hey, let's just celebrate this. This is such a big win. However, on the other side, we still have a big gap, a big gender gap happening in this world. Again, there's a whole difference between the Western world and the rest of the world. A lot of inequalities to address. But now that things got a little bit further and that entrepreneurship is starting to be democratized for women, especially with all the online tools that allow us to create a portable business and a business that is aligned with our lifestyle, there's still something that we need to address, which has to do with the invisible workload. And this is something that I notice when I work with my clients, when we talk to my peers, it's still a big issue, which has to do not so much about how to change our world and our society, but how to make change from within and in our household. In fact, I've seen so many of my peers that even when they have equal opportunities to grow in their careers, they have double the amount of pressure and double the amount of stress and that leads often to burnout because on top of of their careers, they still need to take care of all the as other aspects of the household. And even when the chores are separated in the household, very often it's the women who are in charge of that, what we call mental load, right? So it's not anymore about changing just the systemic environment, but also the mindset not only of the women who feel like they need to take care of everything, but also their support system that needs to be aware of how much of that invisible workload women are still taking in order to carry the whole family, carry the whole community and keep things moving along while trying really hard to still put themselves as a priority as well and put them their own needs and their own dreams on the forefront of their efforts. At the occasion of the Women's Day, I actually want to put the spotlight on an amazing organization that has initiated uh, this concept that's called the Equal Care Day. As I said before, it's not about the equal pay, but equal care. How to actually separate and divide and share but also recognize and compensate the mental load, the caring load that a lot of women carry on their shoulders to be able to support a whole community, not just their families. So check it out. It's called Equal Care Day if you're interested. It's an initiative that was started in Germany and I really wish for them that they will be able to export this idea worldwide. I do think that it is really a smart initiative that needs to be highlighted. I have a whole episode where I go deep into this topic that's really close to my heart that it's called how to break the glass ceiling without breaking yourself. In this episode I also share some of the data that I have collected around this important topic which is the invisible workload and and some of the things that I think uh, we can take, take control of as women to be able to move things forward, starting by our own mindset and then our immediate surrounding and in our immediate community. I will share with you the link to this episode on the show notes. So go to tandemnomads.com slash 293 and you'll be able to find that episode right there where I go deep into this topic. But in this episode, I just wanted to take a moment to, first of all, show my gratitude and remember all the women, and there are so many of them, some of them that we all know and others that might be complete anonymous, but I know that there's so many women around the world who are doing an incredible job 
but have been as well paving the way for us to be where we are today. I do think that it's worth celebrating the amazing progress that we've been making in our society to be able to allow women to have more of a say in our society, but also more access to opportunities to grow their own revenue and their own independence, but also their own status in our society and their own say into how we are building our society. I will not list all these women around the world who have been making things better for all of us. One message I want to share with you, though, is that for me, I take it as part of my responsibility to continue this work, because if I am here today, it's thanks to all these women who have been doing an amazing job in the past to be able to pave the way, as I said, to where we are today. So I just want to take a minute to show my gratitude to all these women for generations who have been one step at a time fighting to be able to live for us to live in the world that we live in and the opportunities we have. But if I had to talk about one woman that right now I'm really following very closely and admiring uh, for the amazing work she's doing for empowering women and young girls especially because I still think we have so much work to do is Malala. So I don't know what other women you have that you're admiring in your journey. For me, Malala is somebody that I'm truly truly grateful for the amazing work she's doing. She has in fact turned a very traumatic experience of her being attacked by the Taliban and managing to escape and today she's turning that into her strength and she's turning her story into a huge platform that does amazing work across borders and across industries to really empower youth and women around the world and support the girls around the world who don't have access to education. And it's really sad to think that we still live in a world where this is necessary. But just knowing that there are people like Malala who are dedicating their whole life for this is just so powerful for me. And it gives me the courage and the inspiration to also figure out how can I contribute to do a better job at supporting younger girls and women um, to be able to live up to their full potential and really be able to access the opportunities they want and they need. And also, at the occasion of this Women's Celebration Month, I want to highlight some of the women in the Tandem Nomads community who are doing an amazing job. And there are many, many of them, so I won't be able to feature them all, but I'm really grateful that some of them took the time to answer a question for you and share their insights on what do they think women need today in order to be more empowered and to be able to live up to their full potential. So I'm really grateful to all these women who are sharing with you their messages. And I am starting right away with a message from Kath Brew. So Kath Brew is an LGBTQ plus inclusion consultant who supports LGBTQ plus allies looking to step into confident, active allyship. Kathy is also an artist and uses her illustration and fun storytelling talents to educate people around the misconceptions related to the LGBTQ plus topics. The reason I wanted to feature Kath is because she is doing, in fact, an amazing job at educating people, empowering the LGBTQ plus community by helping other people who want to be allies to know and understand better the context of the LGBTQ plus community. But I also think that us as women, there are a lot of women in the LGBTQ plus community that need us, the rest of us, to be allies and to support their causes as well. I do think that there is a whole part around the topic of women empowerment that could include a bit more this topic related to the LGBTQ plus, because on top of being a woman, if you're also part of the LGBTQ plus community, it adds a whole range of challenges and that's still in our society today. So if we could use this opportunity as women to be allies, I think we could really make the world a better place. So here's the message of Kath Brew on this topic. What do 
LGBTQ plus women need for women's empowerment. Plainly put, queer women need to be accepted for who they are, who they identify as, and for their life experiences, regardless of your opinion or anyone else's opinion. Standpoint theory identifies that a person, based on their position in society, has a particular standpoint, an experience of the world that's often marginalised, that the majority cannot and should not challenge from their position of privilege. And when you've been the majority of women, being cis, heterosexual women, and you've enjoyed the privilege of that, then equity and equality can feel like oppression. And so people resist. They resist based on privilege, they resist based on ignorance, and they resist based on misguided fear. But this is where the empowerment comes in. This is the exciting bit. This discomfort is a great opportunity for all women to stand together. One person's location on the gender spectrum is not a threat to another's. There's space for everyone. And more importantly, we all are actually pretty similar. You see, we live in a heteronormative society where transgender and non-binary history has been erased. And so people believe that being cisgender and heterosexual is the norm. But actually... It's only your sex that is determined at your birth. Your gender is a social construct. Your gender changes from society to society, from time to time, and relates to your behaviours and your roles that are given to you by that society. And so actually, the only thing that actually is the norm is that every single person who is born is born non-binary. So what do queer women need for women's empowerment? To be listened to, to be heard, to be believed and to be invited to take a seat at the table. Let's stand shoulder to shoulder for the diversity of women's experiences because they make us richer. As Alok Menon says, we seek the proliferation of possibility that blooms when people self-fashion their own ways of living, loving and looking. Now, isn't that all any of us want? What a powerful message from Kath Brew. And I can tell you that the more I get to follow Kath's work, the more I understand and better I understand the complexity that the LGBTQ plus community has to deal with and how important it is that we all feel concerned by this subject. It can feel like such a side thing that doesn't concern us when it actually is at the core of why our society today is not functioning really well is because we are always afraid of the things we don't know. And this is why it was important for me to really put a spotlight on this and to thank Kath for the amazing work she's doing and for also the amazing influence she has had on me to learn about this topic. So thank you so much, Kath, if you're listening. Next is Sunday Bean. But Sunday is also one of those people that I truly, truly admire for her amazing work around women empowerment and inclusion. She is an intercultural strategist, a transformation facilitator, and a solution-oriented coach. She supports individuals, organizations, as they traverse through life quakes and other major shifts of their lives, no matter where they are. Here is her answer to the question. So what do women need to live up to their full potential? I think the first thing that's important to understand is you don't get to already pre-decide what your full potential is because you might be underestimating what you're capable of. Instead, I would do a few things that will help you move forward to continue to discover what you're made of. And it starts with surrounding yourself with the right people. And some of those right people are those who are doing the things that you're hungry to do, but you're not yet there yet. So join up with them, follow them, work with them, read them, study their lives so that you can understand those who are one, two, three chapters ahead and what it took for them to get there. You 
have to do this yourself, your own journey, but you don't have to do it alone. So having people who are a further ahead on that journey will be an important first step. Second, I think it's important for women, especially when you are on your journey to challenge yourself, to grow, to move beyond being small, is that you have a team by your side that will cheer you on. And whether that's your BFF or a professional coach or your partner or your kids or your neighbors who just believe in you, whoever that is, make sure that you stay in community with the people who believe in you or see in you what you are working to see in yourself. Then there's the really pragmatic things, I think, of what it takes for women to live up to their full potential, to find out what they have in them. And it is purely to work on their mindset. Growing up socialized as a female in many, many societies is already being born into a situation where you're told what you should do and what you could do or what you can't do. So having to work through some of those messages will be challenging. Plus, you grow up in your family and you might have picked up messages along the way that don't serve you. So a high priority for you could be to watch your mind crap. (laughs) What are the limiting ways you are talking to yourself? What are the things that you're believing that are keeping you small and are not helping you play bigger and do what you really want to do? The other thing that's very pragmatic is simply to work toward what's important to you with consistency. And it doesn't mean you have to do all of it every day, but it does mean you should do a little often so that you keep making steps forward. And the last thing I think that's important for us to really show up and and fulfill what's inside or to reach the impact that we're hungry for is to take this all as an experiment. Listen to what feels like the right next step and try that. And when you come up against a roadblock, do something else. None of this is going to be a sign of you're going the wrong direction. None of this is going to be a sign that you shouldn't be doing this. It's all just evidence that that way isn't yet the right way. That maybe if you tweak your approach, you'll get more results. So consistency and then experimenting with what works and what brings you that one step further will help you along the way. What I love about Sunday's message here, as well as the next messages you will hear, it's all about what can we do our own level to empower ourselves. Because at the end of the day, I do believe that we can all try to do something to be able to move forward some of the really big roadblocks of our society to be able to create an equal world for all. But some of the things we can do are much easier when we start tackling things in our own mindset. And this is something that I'm really grateful that Sunday brought up as well as the next guest. In fact, in the next audios, you will also hear other tips and insights of what you can do at your own level to make things better for yourself. And very often, it starts with working on our mindset. The next great guest and a great member of Tandem Nomads community is Emily Rogers. Emily is the founder of the Leap to Lead, and she's a transition coach for individuals, but also organizations who are ready to show up the way they truly desire. She is particularly passionate about helping moms finally put themselves first and design an action plan to create the career and the life they want. So here's her message for you. It's just too hard. How many times have you told yourself this? It's just too hard. In celebration of International Women's Day and the amazing people in the Tandem Nomads community, I invite you to take a moment and be honest with yourself. Take a moment, strip it all back back and really look at your life. And I invite you to use this day of celebration to reflect and make sure you're living the life you want to be living. Stop telling yourself it's too hard and take action. If you're ready to escape the rut, if you're ready to rethink your life and make a change, I'm going to share three tips with you that could help. Firstly, get clarity. Ask yourself what you truly want. 
If, you're, if you journal, spend some time reflecting on this question. If you're like me, hold the question in your mind while you head to the park for a walk. Your picture might have many components such as spiritual connection, family and friends, health and wellness, mental, emotional, personal growth, love and relationships, career, finance, business. Get really clear with yourself what is important to you and what do you truly want. Tip two is to know your strengths. Once you know what it is you want, spend some time rediscovering your strengths. Knowing your strengths helps you increase your self-awareness. People who understand their strengths have a better grasp of what makes them unique. More specifically, knowing what you're good at will help you make better decisions every day. When you have clarity on your strengths, you focus on the right things. So grab a pen and paper and make a list of all of your skills, absolutely everything you can do. Then go back with a highlighter, which two or three are your true strengths? Then ask yourself, how do these strengths serve me? And tip three, take action. Now you've decided what you want and how your strengths serve you, take action. Write it down as a goal. Break it down into smaller steps. Importantly, when you're considering your action plan, put it in your diary. Plan your week. Plan your month. Ensure you're using your time wisely. And then work out what is the one thing you can do today to move you closer to that. In my work as a transition and leadership coach, I find too many women feel it's too hard. It's too hard to make a change. It's too hard to step up and show up for themselves. Don't allow yourself to settle in that rut. Take action and move your life forward. It's too hard. Have you ever said that to yourself? I've been saying that to myself many times in my journey and I still do. But I do love this message of Emily that talks about being able to empower ourselves when things get too hard and tackle the mindset and the thoughts and the stories we're telling about ourselves about how and why we can't do what we want to do. It might not feel very pleasant to hear that we actually have a say and a power when things get too hard. There are sometimes out of our control. But as one of my mentors always told me, if you can't change your environment, you can change how to decide to deal with it. Now I want to share with you another message from Camila Quintana. Camila is the founder of the Empowered Expat Women and she works with global women with an impatient desire to make more of their lives abroad, to deeply connect with themselves and their big vision so that they can close the gap between where they are and what they want to be and finally proudly embrace who they have become. You know what I think is needed for us women to live up to our full potential? It's to rise above our excuses. You see, there are so many totally legit and rational sounding reasons for why we can't do certain things, why we can't fully commit or why we can't give it our all. And I get it. As a mom, you know, living abroad, I'm so often tempted to put my kids' needs above my own. But what I've realized is that our excuses are a way of keeping us small. They keep us from shining and from living our best lives. We're not actually doing anyone a favor and we're just compromising our own joy, fulfillment and purpose. And I mean, think about it. If your life somehow depended on it, you would be able to achieve anything you set out to, and more. You'd get out of your head, you'd stop overthinking, overcomplicating things, and you'd get into action, right? You'd just do it. So I believe we are here on earth to unfold our full potential. So instead of finding excuses for why we can't do that, let's use that time and energy to find ways in which we can. And let's support each other in the process. Happy Women's Day. Mm -hmm. I wonder how you resonate with that, right? Stopping to find excuses. Again, it might not be very pleasant to hear, but the truth is we do, all of us, all humans, not just women, do find a lot of excuses in our journey. And often it comes from our self-limiting beliefs. So I love what Camilla is really highlighting that because I do think that particularly women, not because they're 
necessarily looking for excuses, but because they are so used to putting everybody's needs ahead. But as all these women have told me, when you put yourself first, you actually serve your own community and your own family and your own people that you're serving better. I love this message. And another one here from Katya Vlachos. Katya is a certified coach on a mission to support brilliant and ambitious globally minded women to pursue their aspirations while navigating careers and relationships and transitions. She helps them unlock, reclaim their power and make conscious choices to build fulfilling lives. And one of the things that I love about Katya, along the side with all these women here, Katya has really been tackling this topic of freeing ourselves from toxic environments and toxic relationships. So here is her message for you. What do I think women need to live up to their full potential? I'm glad you asked, Amalas. This is something I feel strongly about. I believe there are three things uh, that can enable and empower a woman to pursue her aspirations and fulfill her potential. And these are the right mindset, a clear vision, and some bold action. Now let's start with mindset, and I'll talk about this in the first plural, as I feel that it applies to the majority of us, myself included. Now the key with mindset is recognizing that we have choice. That's the difference between feeling like a victim, I'm powerless, things happen to me, I have no choice, and having a mindset of possibility. I always have choices. I just have to be able to see them. Another important element of mindset is giving ourselves permission to prioritize our needs and aspirations. Now, most women I know are often held back by guilt when they think about prioritizing themselves. And as women, we're raised and conditioned to put everyone else's needs first. So giving ourselves permission to put our own needs and wants first, and that includes investing in our own growth, professional or otherwise, it feels off at first, but it's crucial. And guilt doesn't disappear, but we get better at noticing and questioning our thoughts around it and at choosing to push through despite it. Moving on to vision, and this is knowing what we really want, what aligns with our core values, what's important to us, and our sense of purpose, what gives meaning to our life. Many of us, many of us only have a vague idea of what we want. You know, We want a successful career, an equitable relationship, a meaningful life, or we know very well what we don't want. We don't want this job, we don't want feeling exhausted all the time, but we can't pursue goals we haven't defined. We also often hesitate to dream big when that's exactly what we need to get us motivated and moving. So know your values and set ambitious goals, dream big. And when you know exactly what you want, your brain automatically starts seeing uh, opportunities and choices all around you. That's just how the brain works. And it's what I said before about you having choices, but being able to see the ones you have. So which leads us to number three, action, bold action. Now we have the empowered mindset and we have the vision. Now we need to make it happen. And change almost always requires bold decisions, which can be scary. Now, what helps here? Uh, Mel Robbins, a well-known speaker and author, wrote a book called The Five Second Rule. And in it, she explains that whenever you feel stuck or hesitating, you count down the five seconds and go for it. So you go five, four, three, two, one, and you do it. And this can apply to so many situations in life, including getting through fear and anxiety. So just do it, right? And... The second thing that really helps here is building support and connections. Uh, whether it's a supported community of like-minded women around you or investing in business advice, therapy, coaching, whatever it is that you need, it is that you need to make your dreams a reality. You don't have to do this alone and you're certainly not the only one in your situation. So to summarize, mindset, vision, and bold action. I believe that every woman can do this with the right support. Happy International Women's Day. Guilt. That's another element that I see a lot. It's a big topic, this feeling of guilt. And I'm so glad that Katya brought it up because I do think that we need to tackle it. And something else that Katya said was about once you have actually tackled that emotion and actually decided to get rid of it, it's not anymore about Although having an action plan is really important, but once your mindset has shifted, things start opening up and I've seen it in my own world. Once I've decided to tackle the thoughts and the beliefs that are stopping me, it becomes very natural that automatically our brain starts doing and seeing the right path to get to where we want to be. So I love that message and 
in order to close this episode, I just want to, I'm sure that you have actually noticed that there is a common path between all these messages of these women who work very closely with other women to help them feel completely empowered and live up to their full potential. They're doing an amazing job at it. And I did not give them any direction of where this conversation should go. But the common thread here, if you noticed, is self-empowerment. And I always believe that. If we want to empower women in our society, we need to start with ourselves and empower ourselves to believe in ourselves and give ourselves the resources we need to be able to live up to our full potential. But also to become an advocate, support other women of our community, as well as the women of the LGBTQ plus community, to become a role model, but also to become a supporter and advocate for all the people of our community. So thank you to all these women, Kath, Sunday, Emily, Camilla, and Katia for sharing their powerful messages with us. And I hope that you've been inspired by these messages to take your life into your hands and turn your challenges into great opportunities. In the show notes of this episode, you will find all the information about each of these guests who share their messages. Check it out. Go to tandemnomads.com slash 290. Three. I hope that today you felt empowered and that you felt motivated to take action. I would love to hear from you. How do you resonate with the topic of women empowerment? What do you think that women need to be able to feel empowered? I look forward to hearing from you. You can find my information on the website of Tandem Nomads, tandemnomads.com or DM me on Instagram by finding the handle of Tandem Nomads. Thank you so much for listening. And if you're listening to this during the time it's aired, I'm wishing you a happy and successful journey and a happy woman's day.